of all of the ships I've flown, the Gladius is without a doubt the one that always makes me feel just like a space fighter pilot. I'm Farrister, and in this video I'll be reviewing the Star Citizen ship, the Aegis Gladius. With Star Citizen currently in alpha testing, the Gladius is one of the flyable ships. The ship is a single-seater and is described as a light fighter. For those who've seen some of my other ship reviews, you'll recognise the usual format for this one. I've split into five sections, starting with a ship tour, assessing combat performance, reviewing handling and visibility, looking at the operating costs before finally summarising, and I've included timestamps in the video description to help navigate to each part of the review. And for the 86% of people who watch my reviews but aren't yet subscribed to the channel, be sure to subscribe to be notified of future videos. So, part one, ship tour. And there's not much to add here. The only internally accessible space is the cockpit, which is accessed via a ladder on the left-hand side. As the pilot does jump into the cockpit, there are some nice getting ready animations as he flicks a few switches, which is probably linked to Squadron 42. The externals of the Gladius are very detailed, and the ship does have a fantastic military look and feel to it. Part 2. Combat Performance So, your garden variety Gladius comes ready armed with a Mantis GT220 on the nose, and two Panther laser repeaters, one on each wingtip. That's three size 3 fixed weapons. And yes, for those of you who watch my reviews and know how I love the Gatling guns, I have replaced the Panthers with another two Mantis. Additionally, the Gladius has two size 3 missiles and four size 2 missiles as stock. All in all, that gives the Gladius a lot of firepower for a light fighter. With two size 1 shield generators, the Gladius has a similar level of protection to other light fighters, albeit that's still fairly vulnerable. The size 1 shield generators just don't cut it for me. Thankfully, as long as you don't spend your time jousting too much, the Gladius is a very effective combat vehicle. The forward firepower of the triple size 3 weapons is a good punch, and the missiles add a lot of damage. Notably, the manoeuvrability of the Gladius makes it easy to bring the weapons to bear on the target, as well as fly defensively if needs be. And that brings me back to how the Gladius makes you feel, which is just like a combat fighter pilot. It's not some invincible ship, it rewards you for flying skillfully, and is more than able to hold its own in a fight. Moreover, the firepower means you can tangle with some larger ships should you choose to. Part 3. Handling and Visibility so, I'm going to start with my biggest gripe about the Gladius, which is the grubby fingerprints on the displays. I know it's supposed to just add detail, but it's distracting. And, given that the Gladius is flown by professional pilots, who wear gloves, a little unnecessary. Outside of that, the visibility from the cockpit is generally good. The explosive cord in the canopy does distract a little, and there's a little distortion of the glass where this meets the front of the canopy, but generally speaking, you're able to see just fine out to the front and the sides. Visibility continues good above, in case you're in a dogfight and need to tilt your head up. The heads-up display creeps into the field of view a little, but isn't overly distracting. It's very easy to land the Gladius, although the landing gear is a little jittery, which I can imagine may create for some interesting clenching moments when it's possible to land on an Idris. But where the Gladius really shines is in the handling. This is one of the most manoeuvrable Star Citizen ships out there. The thruster placement is excellent, meaning the Gladius can turn very effectively and point its nose very effectively and also has fantastic acceleration and braking. Honestly, this ship is a joy to fly. And the theme continues, even when gravity is involved. Flying over a moon, the Gladius can twist and turn with the best of them, so even if your quarry makes it to an asteroid field, the odds of successfully avoiding the Gladius are approximately 3,720 to 1. 
And even in atmosphere, the Gladius is one of the smoother ships in the new flight model. It's really important to fly it as you might a fighter jet, meaning you roll the Gladius and use the wings to steer rather than yawing, but doing that means you can comfortably overspeed. I think I'll be getting my Gladius out more often for atmospheric cruises in the future. The Quantum Drive is nothing special, but it's not bad either. I'd describe the range as medium, meaning you could cross the Stantum system with maybe one stop for fuel. Part 4. Operating Costs Running the Gladius is fairly cheap. Refueling, rearming and repairing the Gladius usually costs well below a thousand alpha UEC, especially if you're flying cautiously. Because there's no internalised space for boxes or cargo, the Gladius is largely limited to combat missions. Thankfully, that's a field it does very well in. The patrol type missions seem particularly well suited to the gameplay of the Gladius. Moreover, it's possible to chain a few of these together before heading back for more ammunition or brief repairs, meaning more time on the job. I'd be more careful with some of the larger bounties or the claim jumper missions, simply because the shields on the Gladius aren't incredible, but I'm sure they are very doable for skilled players. So, the Gladius is unlikely to make you your fortune, but it'll turn a modest profit running combat missions, and if you're into the combat gameplay, that's probably what you're most interested in. Part 5. The Verdict the Gladius is available for $90 or in-game for 1.2 million Alpha UEC. I love this fighter, and I'd say both options are worth it, although the pledge only if you're solely interested in combat flight, or if you have other options to fill other gameplay niches. For example, if you also wanted to try your hand at some of the other gameplay that Star Citizen offers, the Avenger, which I recently reviewed, might offer some more alternatives to simply combat missions. That said, for anyone with other ships, I'd absolutely recommend picking up the Gladius for the in-game price. I expect we'll get to fly it a lot in Squadron 42, and people will really take a shine to it there. Let me know in the comments if you would agree or disagree. And if you found this review helpful, please press that like button. You might also be interested in my review of the Avenger at a similar price point. And please also subscribe if you'd like to see future Star Citizen content. Check out the video description for details of my active Star Citizen organisation, and thank you for watching.